We've all heard of this term AI operating system. Basically an AI that can control and automate desktop tasks on Linux, Windows, or even Mac OS. But the problem is most of these tools are either behind steep paywalls or the thing is most of the times when people cover and termed any sort of app as an AI operating system, it's not actually operating on the desktop. It's usually just something that operates on the cloud or either is just showcasing a browser automation. But today I want to showcase something that is truly an AI operating system that controls and automates your desktop. And it is completely free and open source called ByteBot, the first ever open source and self-hosted AI desktop operating system. ByteBot deploys AI agents directly into your desktop to automate computer tasks through natural language prompts and it operates inside a secure containerized desktop environment. Now, unlike browser-only agents or traditional RPA tools, ByteBot is built around a full virtual desktop. This means that the agent has its own computer, not just access to the browser tab. Here's what it can do. You can use desktop applications, you can browse, email clients, use office tools, even IDEs. You can download and organize files within its own operating file system, you can log into websites, apps, use password managers. You can even read and process documents, PDFs, and spreadsheets, and complete multi-step workflows across different programs. Think of this as a virtual employee with its own machine. It can see the screen, move the mouse, type the keyboard, and get work done just like a human would. Here's how it works. You describe a task and ByteBot will be able to boost up a fresh sandbox computer. From there, it completes the task by visually interacting with apps, clicking, typing, and navigating the UI. And the best part is you can scale from just one agent to hundreds in parallel, so you can run them asynchronously. Just take a look at this demo where it was asked to go to DigiKey's website and search for a product. It opened the data set, downloaded it into the desktop's document folder. It summarized the data sheet into a text file based off the natural language prompt that was sent in and even created a report to showcase what it had accomplished. This is the capability of ByteBot, a fully open source AI desktop OS built for real automation. Now, just a quick announcement before we get started. On my second channel, if you haven't seen this already, I'm gonna be posting a bit more regularly over here, me and my team, so go ahead and subscribe. We're gonna be posting more news content over here. So I definitely recommend that you take a look at this with the link in the description below. But now that we have gotten all that out of the way, let's now showcase how you can set this up. This is where you can use this completely for free and have it self-hosted with the local model. And I'll leave a link to all of these different resources that I use in today's video in the description below. What you want to do is head over to the docs and you want to head over to the quick start menu. This is where you can choose your deployment method where you can easily get it started in approximately two minutes. You can use Railway as one option to get started. You can also use Docker Compose, Kubernetes, as well as just simply desktop only. Now, just an FYI, Railway is a cloud hosting, which I don't recommend you use because it's going to be something that you're going to need to pay for as you use it with scale, which is why I would recommend you use Docker Compose and then set up a local model. I know it says uh, Anthropic, OpenAI, and Google, but you can set the OpenAI compatible API with Olama, and then that way you can use a uh, open source model with this ByteBit AI agent. Now, you need to make sure you have the prerequisites fulfilled. Make sure you have uh, 20.10 or above for Docker. Make sure you have Docker Compose installed and four gigabytes of RAM or above available. Once that is done, you can clone the repository, which is really simple. Just head over to your command prompt, and then you can clone this repository of ByteBit. Once it has finished cloning, you can then head over into the directory of ByteBit by typing in cd ByteBit into the command prompt. Sorry, not ByteBit, I meant ByteBot. And once you are in this directory, what you want to do now is configure the, your API provider. I'm going to be using Anthropic as my provider, but you can use whatever you want. You can use Gemini, OpenAI, or a local model, which you can configure manually. Once that is done, you can start the agent stack with the docker compose command, but make sure you have docker desktop running in the background. Once you have it running in the background, you can then paste in this command, which will start to install this. Now I got this error because I got to uh, actually have docker desktop running. So 
and I haven't even set my API keys. But once I've done this, I can then start it up and then I can access it on my local host. Before we get started, I just want to mention that you should definitely go ahead and subscribe to the World of AI newsletter. I'm constantly posting different newsletters on a weekly basis. So this is where you can easily get up to date knowledge about what is happening in the AI space. So definitely go ahead and subscribe as this is completely for free. There we go. Once we are on our local host, this is what we're going to be greeted with. This is the home page of ByteBot, where you can simply go ahead and describe any sort of action you want to have the AI agents complete. You can select whatever model you want. You have the Gemini models, GBT models, as well as Claude. Now, I'm going to be using Claude Sonnet 4 because I believe it is perfect for this. But if you want a cheaper alternative that is probably good as well, you can use the Gemini 2.5 Pro for that. This is where I just sent in this prompt to head over to the World of AI YouTube channel, and it's going to now go over and navigate to this channel. It looks like it has already started by opening up Firefox, and it has already went over to my channel. And you can see that it works pretty quickly in terms of executing these different tasks. Now, see if you want to manually observe your desktop, you can head over to the desktop tab, and this is where you can manage your terminal, you can manage VS Code, your password manager, as well as a couple of other things like Thunderbird Mail, yeah, Firefox, and then the docs is where you can obviously get a better insights on what you can do. Now, next up, what I want to do is have it go to the Cloud Code website, and I wanted to essentially install Cloud Code into the terminal. And you can see right now it is taking a screenshot of Firefox to head over to Cloud Code's website to get a better understanding of the installation process. Once it has gotten a good grasp as to what the step starts to install this, it's going to then work on installing it into the operating systems terminal, which is pretty insane, guys. This not only is able to work on the browser, but it's also able to work locally and execute these different tasks. So you can do something like installing different things autonomously with the AI, or you can work on delegating different tasks to VS Code, use it so that it could automate document parsing, scanning as well as analyzing PDFs and different docs. And right now you can see that right over here, it's on Anthropic's Cloud Code page. It's going to get the command to install it. Once it gets a better understanding, it'll open the terminal and actually install it, which is going to be pretty cool. Now what's cool is that right now you can see that it has gotten the npm install command and within our terminal, it is first checking if we have node.js installed, which is absolutely insane. And you can see that it is installed. So now it's going to execute the command of installing Cloud Code within the terminal. And there we go. It looks like Cloud Code has been installed within our computer. Now, I will be honest, it did take a while to get it started because I needed to reprompt it and I had to direct it to use the Cloud command to start it up. And I know it could take pretty long to actually set all of this up, but it will get the job complete over time if you direct it properly which is why you need to be as descriptive as possible. Now, next, I'm going to have it go over to Wikipedia and create a summary of quantum computing and then saving that summary to the notes file. Now, essentially, they have re recommended a couple of example tasks that will get you a good idea of what you can do with ByteBot from basic examples to document processing or even multi-application workflows where you can have different agents working asynchronously on different tasks. But you can see right now, on Wikipedia, it is searching up quantum computing, and then it's gonna formulate a good idea of what it is, and then create a summary of it using AI, and then it's gonna locally create a summary for it into a notes tab. So it looks like it has gotten a summary on quantum computing that was generated by AI based off the contents it found from Wikipedia. Now it's using the terminal to create the txt file to paste that in which is pretty cool if you like this video and would love to support the channel you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below or you can consider joining our private discord where you can access multiple subscriptions to different ai tools for free on a monthly basis plus daily ai news and exclusive content plus a lot more but that's basically just the gist of bytebot this is a pretty impressive new open source AI operating system that actually is an operating system that can control the desktop, unlike the other browser agents or other AI agents claiming to be an AI OS. But with that thought, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and got some sort of value. Hopefully, this is something that will help you out. 
I'll leave all these links in the description below. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the newsletter, join the second channel, join the Discord, follow me on Twitter, and lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and please take a look at our previous videos because there's a lot of content that you'll truly benefit from. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.